Hey YouTube, have you ever been playing Ultima Online and accidentally restarted your bandage when it was just about to go off, resulting in that dreaded gray screen of death? First death of the stream. Maybe you're on Outlands and you're already using a bandaging timer, but still died because it restarted itself somehow? Well today, I'm going to show you a few ways to prevent that override using a custom timer, which will help you stay alive. I'm going to be covering timers, system messages, and loops. The following guide will apply to all servers that allow Razor. We'll even talk about the built-in timer on Outlands called Bandaging, and why I won't be using it in any more scripts related to combat. Are you ready to heal? Let's talk about the basic ways we can apply a bandage, both from an in-game macro and a Razor hockey. The way you apply to the bandage is double-click a bandage and then select your target. Hopefully you're never double-clicking a bandage, but we can actually set up some in-game macros for this. If I hit Alt-O and I go to Macros, you would want to create a Bandage Self macro. You'd select Bandage Self from the dropdown. Click in this box here to set a hockey. Mine is V. Apply a Bandage. If I hit V, it says I'm not damaged. If you're playing with a friend, you will also want to create a Bandage Nearest. Select Nearest Creature. And here you can change it to either Mobile, Party, Follower, whatever best suits you. And then Bandage Target. Unfortunately, there's no just use Bandage built into the game here. Uh, but that's where you can tap into Razor. Under the Hotkeys tab, if you just filter by Bandage, you're gonna get to see all the options for Bandage. Now these are all the things we're about to talk about. But there's Bandage Self, Bandage Last Target, and there's also one called Use Bandage No Timer. I like the concept of the in-game macros and Hotkeys without any scripts. The problem here is if you get hurt and you hit your Hotkey again, you will overwrite your Bandage. V on the keyboard, I accidentally hit it again. It restarts my Bandage. If you're wondering where I got this overhead from, that's actually in Razor as well. Get into Razor and you go to Display Counters and then Bandage Timer. You can choose to turn it on as an overhead or a system message and show everyone one second or not. We also have the in-game cooldown for Bandage. That would be all O cooldowns. You name it whatever you'd like, I name mine Bandage. And the cooldown type is Bandage Timer. Okay, so let's see how we can fix the overriding with a script. If you're on Outlands, you've probably seen me use this built-in command called Bandaging before. It's actually a timer, so we can say if not bandaging, use a, use a bandage, and this is great. However, if a world save happens or the client happens to lag, the timer will actually expire before your bandage goes off, and it can result in you reapplying your bandage too quickly before you get healed and get you killed. So I recommend not using this anymore, and whether you're going to play on Outlands or another server, we're going to create our own timer for handling bandages. In order to do that, we'll use set timer, give it a name and a value. Timers count upwards, so in this particular script, we should see it output 1000, which is one second. If we hit playing this again, we'll get one second again because we're constantly resetting the timer. So what we want to do is we actually only want to create the timer if it doesn't already exist. So now if I hit play, it's going to be over a second. Okay, cool. Now what, Jace? Well, we're going to use the timer to know when it's safe to apply a bandage. I have another basic example. Let's assume it takes 15 seconds max for a bandage to go off. We'll only want to apply a bandage if the timer is over that 15 second mark. Once we confirm we've applied a bandage, we can set the timer to zero. If I hit play here, who will use a bandage on? And if I hit play again, it said that we're doing it too soon. It will only apply again after the 15 seconds. You may notice that the timer starts back to zero, even though we might actually have not applied a bandage. Like for example, here we're full health. So let's only reset the timer to zero if we successfully begin to apply a bandage. So in this example, we're only setting the timer if it needs to be set. We're going to hockey bandage self, but we're gonna actually wait 500 milliseconds and then only set the timer to zero if we begin bandaging. So if I hit play here, it says, who will you want to use these bandage on? It's not being damaged, but we didn't have a system message here. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. I hit play. There we go. We did not start. Did not start because we're full health. If I get hurt and play, it successfully started the bandage. If I hit play again, it says too soon. It still says too soon, even though we're done. You might have noticed that we're waiting 500 milliseconds here. We're going to use our trick of get label that we learned in our last video to wait the minimum required based on your ping. Now it's much more snappy. Okay, great. This only sets the timer when we successfully apply the bandage. Using this script will work as it is, and you can replace bandage self with bandage last target or use bandage no timer if you're hoping to heal someone and not override your bandage. But we can definitely make this better using system messages. Since it might not always take the full 15 seconds to heal, depending on your skill, 
Dex, Target, or the server, we can make this better and much more universal. We will want to look for system messages related to finishing a bandage, including any failures and successes, and set the timer at its max value. In most of my scripts, I would use clear sys message to make sure we clear out any messages and then do our action and look for the one that we want. If we don't clear them out, we can get a false positive from a previous action, just like we saw a little bit ago. The problem with this approach is we might be clearing other system messages that we would like to tap into later. If we call clear sys message here, this will never be hit. My new approach is to only clear out the one message we care about. When you check for a system message using if in sys message, it will actually pop that message out of the system message queue. But here we're gonna pop one out. We may pop another one out, but there still could be more. If you have multiple messages, you're gonna to need to clear them all. To do this, we can use a while loop. So while in this message you begin, we're just gonna clear them all. We do the same thing with finish. Okay, sweet. Let's make sure to update the timers now based on these messages and clear them both out. So if we begin, we wanna have a timer of zero. And if we finish, we wanna set it to the max of 15 seconds. Now that we understand how to clear and check for system messages, let's actually add a helper variable for the max time we think a bandage would ever take. I'm going to use a band-aid timer cooldown with 20 seconds as the default. We'll also want to default the timer to the max of 20 so that when we first hit play in the script, we're ready to apply an aid without waiting 20 seconds. Jace, it's never going to take 20 seconds to heal. What the hell are you thinking? The idea is to make sure that we don't accidentally override due to a world save, lag spike, or just bad luck. But don't worry. We shouldn't ever need to wait the full 20 seconds anyway. In our actual script, we're going to make sure that we set the bandage timer to zero if we see you begin applying. And in reverse, we want to set the timer to its max cooldown of 20 seconds if we see messages related to it being finished. We need to make sure to include success, failure, and different types of applications finishing, like resurrection. Depending on the server, there might be more messages to add to this, but this covered Outlands, Unchained, and most servers. You finish applying, you heal a little, it barely helped, you fail to resurrect, you are able to resurrect. This is true, we're going to set the timer. Since there's so many messages to check, we can actually use a, a while statement and an or loop. So while in this message or in this message or in this message or, we're going to set it as finished to the cooldown of 20 seconds. We go back to our original script. We've added in some overheads to see what's happening. Just a review, we have our bandage timer cooldown of 20 seconds. We're gonna set the timer if it doesn't exist. If we see you begin applying, we wanna set the bandage timer to zero. We'll output bandage was started. We'll also wanna reset the timer if we see finished, you heal, you res, etc. We're setting the timer to the max value. Now we're gonna check to see is the timer greater than or equal to the max time? If so, we can bandage. If we see we begin applying, set the timer to zero, or just let us know it didn't start or if it's too soon. If I hit play here, did not start, did not start. I'm gonna drink a poison potion and hit play. I'm gonna hit play again. It says too soon. Now if I hit play, it says bandage has finished and it did not start because it picked up on the finished bandage system message. If I hit play again here, it just says will not start. What's great about having a Razor bandage script hockey similar to this is that you can still have a regular bandage hockey in the game and you can control when to override your bandage if you want. Maybe you didn't lose as much health as you thought you would and you want to avoid healing for just a few ticks. You can use bandage self in the game to restart your band-aids. If you run your script, it won't override the bandage. The control is back in your hands. I hit two on the keyboard here. I bound this to a hockey now. It's two. If I drink a potion and I hit two, it's it's not overriding the bandage. However, I hit V on my keyboard, it did override the bandage. Now, if I hit two again, it knows that we started the bandage. If I hit two again, it says the bandage is finished. Hit two, 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 it's saying I need to wait. Bandage is finished. And remember, this, this system message is coming from our script. So it sees, it sees that we finished the bandage and it sets the timer appropriately. Let me know in the comments if you think this is awesome. <laughs> But wait, there's more. There's some advanced usage with loops. We can take this script even further by turning it into a loop that will just continue to run while you're playing with no need to hit the key. A note about scripts and loops. You can only have one script running at a time. Using another script will stop the current one from running. You can call a script from another, but you won't like pick up where it left off in the original. It only runs once and it's done. With looping, make sure to add a slight delay if you're taking an action inside your loop to avoid spamming the server and getting disconnected. For loops, you have three options. You can use the keyword loop or replay, which will start the script from the very first line. They're actually the same thing. So we'll always start at one, either loop or replay. And play in the script here. It's always starting over. I like using while not dead because a lot of times we don't need to keep checking for certain logic. Like if a timer exists in every loop, 
So moving some of the logic that isn't required to the top of the script can help increase your overall speed of the script. Here we'll only see this once, and we'll only see this if we're applying. So if I hit play here, drink a poison, so we're gonna get hurt, applying, so it, it correctly picked that up. Hit it again, applying. Okay, enough examples. Let's finish up the script and remove any of the unnecessary overheads. You can also add in some logic to only apply the bandage for getting hurt. If you wanna apply a bandage, you need to be missing health, being poisoned, diseased, or bleeding. Go ahead and hit play in this script. Now it did pick up that the bandage was just finished because we had a previous system message. If I double click a bandage and target myself, nothing happens because we're not hurt. The moment I drink a poison potion, the bandage starts. The moment it finished, it restarts again. The world saves incoming, so we're actually gonna drink some more poison potions just so we can see how this is working. So world saved like right when we finished. It's kind of hoping that it would be during the thing, but that's okay. As you can see, it's starting the bandage the moment it's over. Remember, this script will continue to run. Let's say we were fighting something and uh, we didn't want this bandage to stop. See how we're not hurt at all, like really? So if I hit V on my keyboard, that actually will start a, a bandage over. So our script is still running. I'm going to hit V again. Our script is still running, but the timer is correctly handled just within the script. I mean, just like that, you have a script that you can continue to run and keep you healed without having to think about it. If you do want to think about it, though, you can re reapply that bandage before it's finished just using your bandage self hockey that's in the game. If you made it this far, you might ask yourself, like, what about potions and buffs and attacking? Well, that's where uoragegrips.com comes in. At uoragegrips.com, you're going to find all sorts of scripts to look for. Some of the bigger ones are the uh, Autodexer and the Arcane Mage. Be sure to check out the site, and while you're there, support the project and the JSONs channel to get access to the premium scripts posted in the JSONs Discord. Don't let Jace's dream become a meme, <laughs> support the stream, and you can level up your gameplay at the same time. If there's something you'd like to know more about or think scripts are ruining the game, be sure to drop a comment and let me know. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe for more UO content. I'll see you next week. Peace.